a devotion for the Friday after Ash Wednesday, based in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21, focused on verses 8 to 15. There were shepherds in that region, out in the open, keeping a night watch around their flock. An angel of the Lord stood in front of them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Don't be afraid, the angel said to them. Look, I've got good news for you, news which will make everybody very happy. Today a Savior has been born for you, the Messiah, the Lord, in David's town. This will be the sign for you. You'll find the baby wrapped up and lying in a feeding trough. Suddenly with the angel there was a crowd of the heavenly armies. They were praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace upon earth among those in his favor. So when the angels had gone away again into heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Well then, let's go to Bethlehem and see what it's all about, all this that the Lord has told us. As a shepherd, you'd be used to having the sheep follow you with a kind of blind obedience. In the Middle East to this day, shepherds don't need sheepdogs to tell the sheep what to do. They just set off ahead of the sheep. The sheep trust them to take them to places where, in an often dis dusty and stony landscape, there will be water to drink and grass to nibble. So off they go. Now imagine you were one of those shepherds out on the hills near Bethlehem, suddenly finding that instead of leading your sheep to where they can get food, someone else is telling you to go and find something, someone who's lying in a feeding trough. How absurd is that? Your first reaction might well be, this is some kind of a joke. I must have been dreaming. But no, all your companions have seen and heard it as well. So we have to be sheep now, do we? Why is that? Back comes the answer, sung to music the like of which you've never imagined before. The great shepherd himself has been born. The king is here, and you are his sheep, his people. Come and find him. And as a sign that you're not just having a kind of collective hallucination, something remarkable and unlikely, the baby, when you find him, will be lying in a feeding trough. You'll see and you'll know. Pause and think prayerfully about what sort of decision it takes to do what the angels were insisting. This is quite crazy. Things like this don't happen, especially not to me. And even supposing that this really might be the boy king who would be the shepherd of God's people, it could be dangerous. Perhaps we shouldn't get mixed up in stuff like that. Better to lie low, to stay quiet, keep your head down. But then, supposing this was the moment towards which your whole life had been leading. And suppose you messed it up and missed it out. You wouldn't want to spend the rest of your days kicking yourself and not being there at the most important moment in your own life. So off you go. And it's true, however unlikely. There is the baby in the feeding trough. The message was right. So there really were angels after all. And equally unlikely. So this really is the boy king, David's son to think you might have shrugged your shoulders and not turned up. Today, pause and pray about the quiet messages you get from time to time. Perhaps not angels singing, but a soft whisper that tells you to go somewhere unexpected, to do something you hadn't planned, to visit someone you weren't previously thinking about. Lord, let me be ready to hear your voice and let me be eager to obey, to come and worship.